Welcome to our live stream tour, direct from Edinburgh, Scotland. This is our live 23rd of March, 2024. Hey Don, here, you see? So say hello. Say hola, buenos dias. Guten Morgen. Guten Abend. Oh, like buenas tardes. Oh. oh. They just came up on my screen. What's happening? Hi Artie, Barbie. Oh, jeepers, man. Oh, I'm going to try. I'm going to try and get the signal back, everyone. Hold on. It's just unbelievable sometimes, isn't it? That the signal just goes. No idea why it happens. I don't even know if you can hear me or see me. God. Prism. <laughs> Transmission is unstable due to a weak network. Okay, let's see if I can pick up the network again. I'm not too far away from the centre of Edinburgh. You know, a mile, half a mile, three quarters of a mile. It's better now. It doesn't say it's better on my screen. <laughs> it still says transmission is unstable due to a weak network condition. Connection. We're in Edinburgh. Edinburgh is the capital city of Scotland. Why have I got a weak signal? <laughs> it's better. Oh, that's went away now. <laughs> it's eventually went away on the screen now. I wonder what I didn't like about that end. So just along there was pretty bad. So we're in Stockbridge today. Um, Stockbridge means timber, a timber bridge. It's not there, and well, the original one's obviously not there, the timber bridge. The bridge connecting uh, Edinburgh to Stock Bridge, uh, that was built in 1801. Better now. Yeah, I don't know what happens, you know what it's like with this uh, Prism YouTube thing. You just never know what it's going to be like. And you would think it would be a a good signal area. Wonder. I can see in here and I managed to get the comments. <laughs> Every day's a bonus, Linda. Every day's a school lesson, as they say, or whatever it is. <laughs> I'm still learning every day. Trying to control my moaning tendencies. Scottish people love to moan and fight and argue and swear. The sooner people understand it, the easier, the easier it is for everyone. <laughs> so how's everyone doing this lovely Saturday? Scotland got beat 4-0 from the Netherlands last night. They played Scotland. Scotland were actually the better team for the first 70 minutes. They just couldn't score. And then uh, Netherlands scored a goal. Then Scotland made substitutes and then they just fell apart. After 70 minutes. Let's look at the ghost writing on the shop there. So this is a street called St Stephen Street. It's actually about 200 years old. Apart from this side here, this is brand new. This used to be a nightclub here actually. Um, what was it called? God, I've been to a few times. It was a cheesy, you know, a cheesy 80s, 90s disco. Suspiciously, suspiciously it went on fire. <laughs> uh, and then lo and behold, hundreds of houses were built, costing hundreds of thousands of pounds each. Handy that, wasn't it? The church burning down suspiciously. <laughs> yeah, so this street dates back to the 1820s. Named after the church here. You see the, well, it's not a church anymore. You see the church, St. Stephen's, St. Stephen's Church. So it dates back to 1820s. Cobbles, yeah. <coughs> cobbled roads, yeah. Edinburgh's still got a lot of cobbled roads, actually. Well, I think there's a guy going the wrong way down a one way street here. I don't think. Are you supposed to go that way? Is that two way? I thought this was one way, this street. People don't seem to care these days, do they? <laughs> so it's not, again, this church is not a church anymore. Well, I don't think it is a church anymore. 
it's like a little theatre type place, you know. They have shows and stuff on. Little church here. Little Episcopalian church here. So this is a, what's this, St Vincent's Chapel. Scottish Episcopalian, of course, the back to Bonnie Prince Charlie. The Episcopalians were getting mistreated by the um, the Presbyterians. They were both fighting each other for the to become the established church in Scotland after the Reformation, you see. So people are going in, must be a show on today. They're all queuing up to go in. Yeah, the reason I've come down here, you know how I hate Instagrammers? <laughs> I always go on about Instagrammers and how much I hate them. And they get in my way. Get the lovely little bar here, St Vincent Bar. Well, <laughs> the reason I come down here is uh, this is called Circus Lane, okay? And um, see how Circus Lane. <laughs> And uh, it's one of the top 10 Instagram spots in Edinburgh. I would actually hate to live here because all day it's just full of Instagrammers. It's not looking so good just now. Obviously, we're just coming to spring. So there's not much. There's usually a lot more plants and stuff here, you can see. Um, I know a lot of people who live here. Um, they get really frustrated with Instagrammers. So I just thought I would come down and uh, <laughs> show you this part. See, I'll show you what all the fuss is about. Yeah, and uh, especially a you know, nice little cherry blossom coming out there. Yeah, it's usually full of plants and all that. Obviously, we're at the, the people who live here put plant pots out. And, which if I lived here, I'd probably put nothing out. The more stuff you put out, the more you encourage the Instagrammers to come. <laughs> so I just wouldn't put anything out. I'd put, maybe leave a big Rottweiler outside, starving, tied up, chained up to them. <laughs> Anyone stop? Everyone's too scared, they stop, you know. But this is where they come. See, I remember the first time I come here, I was trying to get a postcard shot for everyone, you know, and it was just almost impossible to get nobody in the shot. To be honest, I shouldn't have probably come on a Saturday, but one of my acquaintances, one of my friends was actually responsible for this. It used to be like little workshops at the bottom and house in the top. You can see some have been converted into garages and the bottom parts have been converted into different types of housing as well. Um, but it was just a rundown lane. This is why they come here for this shot here. Uh, so they'll come here and uh, take their Instagram shot, you know. So it's like uh, it's a lovely, quiet little street. Obviously, you'll not get much traffic here. You won't get much noise here. As I said, that there's a car coming along. <laughs> Yes, it was actually one of my acquaintances, somebody I know. It was quite run down, as I said, it was just workshops. Oh, big, big bee already. And, you know, it's just a, a normal street. And so my friend started tidying it up. He lived here. And he started tidying it up and putting out plant pots and all that. And so everyone else, all the neighbours, started doing the same, you know. Um. Then all of a sudden it became like a really desirable place to come and then of course Instagram came out. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so now it's like as I said, if you go to Edinburgh, uh, if you type in top 10 Instagram spots in Edinburgh, Circus Lane will come up. And this is why they're coming up to get this view here. Lovely roses and different types of plants growing up. Outside, if you like plants and stuff, it's nice to come here. Yeah, I'll come back in the summer. I'll come back in the summer when it's all in bloom. I've just been up the town 
I've just been handing out some flyers to all the five-star hotels in Edinburgh. So I went into the Glen Eagles, the Grand. The Malmaison's only four-star. So I went, and, I went and gave them my flyers to see if they could um, bring people on my tour, you know. Book people on my tours. So there you go. This is why everyone comes for this shot here. They all stand here and get a selfie done and... Um, take a few shots of each other and then leave and go to the next Instagram spot. <laughs> that's quite a nice area. I must admit, that's quite nice here. As I said, I wouldn't like to live here, but too busy. Nice and quiet in the winter and it's not too busy today, you can see. The good thing is about the Instagrammers is they just come and go quickly. But the, the problem is if there's just so many of them, look at this lovely little place here. Oh, I see they've got bits of the gardens at the back there as well, lovely. Just imagine the... So you get peace and quiet in between at the back, eh? So you get peace and quiet there. Um, lovely little hedges outside that as well. Be good for the wildlife, you know. Birds will be starting to nest soon. See, now I've got bloody pigeons trying to nest on my balcony. It's a nightmare. Lovely little rose bushes. Most, I used to be a gardener. And uh, most gardeners in the world hate, that's not a rose actually, I thought they were roses but it's not a rose, so I don't know what they are, actually. Any horticulturists here? I'm not sure what that is, they look like roses, I thought it was roses but it's not. Because I was about to say, every inst every gardener's, um, well most commercial gardeners, they hate roses. Because <laughs> they're really awkward. It's a lovely little area. They could make a fortune, I know they could, eh? See, that'd be nice when well, it's in bloom as well. I don't know if it's grapes or... I don't know what that is up there. You can grow grapes in Scotland, but you need to have them in a conservatory. I don't know if the grapes would flower outside. I don't know if they are grapes right enough, but... Hard to tell what they are. This is some kind of plant. Not clematis, is it? Well, see, I used to be a gardener, but I've not worked in... done gardening for... Oof, 2001. When was the last time I'd done gardening? 2001. So, all, most of the plants have forgotten their names. I used to be able to identify plants through the, just the branches, the leaves. Nice little light up there as well, look. Little kind of Victorian street light up there. So this one's a garage. I'm surprised I've not converted that into a bedroom. If you convert that into a bedroom, put an extra hundred grand on the value of your house. This is an extension of the original new town here. When the new town was built in Edinburgh from 1760s onwards, it was it was three streets: Queen Street, um, George Street, and, Prin and Princess Street. See, there's a plaque up there, 1990. I wonder if that's when it started to change after 1990. I'm not sure. But these things here, they look like roses, don't they? They seem to be quite popular. They look like roses. But anyone any idea what these are? Because they've got big green, big leaves, but there's no thorns on them. So I've got no idea what they are. So there you go, Circus Lane it's called, everyone. Circus Lane, it's a very, very hoity-toity area, should we say, round about here. Uh, property prices will be extortionate. Look at that. What an ugly car. It's like a big cube. Not a very nice colour either, is it? In my opinion. <laughs> In my humble opinion. <laughs> so this is Circus Lane, everyone. As I said, if you go on Google and Google Instagram spots, this street will come up as one of the top ones. Nice little bar, St Vincent. I think it used to be a gay bar. Well, it used to be a lot of gay bars around this area. St Vincent. Lovely little bar, but I think that's called Wild Rose. You know, it's not, I don't think it's Camellia. Oh, maybe mind you, I've forgotten everything. What am I saying? Um, look at this, everyone. Look at the name of this street. Cumberland Street. 
They are St. Stephen's Church. Very nice part, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, look at the name of the street, everyone. Cumberland Street. For those of you who know anything about the Jacobites, Cumberland, the Duke of Cumberland, the butcher, was the British Hanoverian officer in charge of the British forces who committed what would be classed as genocide. Um, a lot of people think the street's named after him. It's actually named after one of his later relatives. Um, yeah, because I used to think it was named after Cumberland Street as well, uh, the Butcher Cumberland. And I bought a book on street names of Edinburgh. And allegedly, according to the, the guy who wrote it, had done the research, it was named after one of his later relatives. But even so, having a street named Cumberland. In fact, there's a place in Scotland called Angus. The only boy's name. <laughs> Angus is the, the only boy's name in Scotland that's also a county. So Angus is a county. The county around Edinburgh is Midlothian. But Angus, they do have a street named after the Butcher Cumberland. And there is a big debate on just now about changing the name. Because having it named after a guy who committed what would be classed as war crimes today, it's not very nice. So you see, this is Stockbridge, just coming into the Edinburgh centre up here. It's quite hilly. Lovely Georgian architecture. It's actually Victorian architecture here. Although they call it Georgian. Because it was all built after the 1820s. But it's all specialised shops, you know. They've all like art galleries, um, estate agents, candle shops, like posh shops, you know, photography shops, yoga, Leo's Beanery. I just went for a coffee before the tour started and I sat down on a step getting ready for my tour and a big horrible black leaf blew into my coffee with all these bits in it <laughs> I had two whole zips out of it so I never got my coffee, it cost me three pounds <laughs> so I was devastated so over here this street over here, I'm not going over it's called Jamaica Street and again, that's quite a controversial name. Jamaica Street. Round the corner we've got Antigua Street. And as you can tell by the place names, that's places where Scotland helped to colonise. So it's a hark back to the, the slave area period. When Scotland, Jamaica was basically a Scottish colony. The Jamaica flag is based on the Scotland flag as well. So it's got links to the slave trade. Um, J.M. Barry, remember J.M. Barry, Peter Pan author? He was born just around the corner here. And another very famous Scottish author grew up around here as well. I'm going to show you who it is actually. So this is called Harriet Rowe. <laughs> To be honest, the coffee was not very nice. It was a proper Italian deli. So I'm thinking, yeah, the coffee's going to be really nice. But it wasn't that good. So, it had a weird taste, you know. So look here. You might recognise this dude's name. Look. The home of Robert Louis Stevenson. 
to 1880. Now, but just remember, it's a private house, not a museum. Again, number 17 here, though, they actually lived up the top. But you see over here, look here. <coughs> Edinburgh is 100 square miles. 49% of Edinburgh is green space. <coughs> okay. But it has private gardens. So you see here, this is a private garden. Although I've just noticed, oh, all right, it's not here. Coffee morning, I don't know if it's here. 23A, 30 row. Entertainment for the kids in our cinema. So it's not in there. So this is a private garden. Right? So Edinburgh's got about six, seven, eight private gardens where only the rich people who live here get access to the key. But if you look at Robert Stephen, Robert Louis Stevenson, he lived up the top. He was a very sickly child, Robert Louis Stevenson, when he was growing up. He was kept in quite a lot. There he's there. Look. There he's there. See, so he lived here from when he was seven. He was, he was, he's actually, well, his house where he was born was just put up for sale about a few months ago for just over a million pound. So, you see here, he ended up dying in um, Samoa. He was very sickly, travelled around Europe and all that. They reckon he wrote one of the, world, the world's first travel books. Tra uh, de uh, travels with a donkey. Treasure Island, kidnapped, Jekyll and Hyde. Um, his last unfinished novel, Weir of Hermiston, would have been his masterpiece. And yes, it was a private garden, right? So he was kept in quite a lot. But back when he was alive, inside the gardens was a, a little island. And he used to watch the kids because he's quite high up. He's way up there, remember? Right? Now, you've got to bear in mind, back in the 19th century, these trees would not have been as mature or high. Uh, he was very young, died in Samoa. Uh, one of my friends just went and visited his shrine. The Samoans built a shrine to him. Uh, but it's a bit of a trek to get there. Uh, I've actually got Kiwi friends whose mum was from Samoa. Um, and a lot of my Scottish friends went and done a pilgrimage to go and see his, his um, shrine, his burial place. He was well respected by the Samoan people as well. He fought for the rights and so on. Um, but yeah, we, so it's, uh, his family were lighthouse engineers. And he didn't want to be a lighthouse engineer much to the disgust of his parents. Um, he wanted to become an author, but his parents made him go to university to study law instead. He never ever practiced law. He just became an author. And it's believed the island in here gave him the inspiration for Treasure Island. Look at a little squirrel. It's a standoff. Me or a squirrel. As long as it doesn't jump at me. <laughs> and yeah, he used to sail about. Oh, we're at the tree. There you go. He used to sail about Scotland, obviously. And there's an island. The Stevenson family built almost every lighthouse in Scotland. Very famous engineers, the Stevenson family. And there's an island in the Firth of Forth, down on the east coast. The island is called Fidra. Fidra Island, okay? And if you took a map of Treasure Island and put it on top of Fidra, this little volcanic plug in the Firth of Forth, it matches almost identically Treasure Island and Fidra. So you can see where he got his inspiration from. One of his most famous books, of course, or movies as well, was The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Oh yeah, what was I going to say first? See that house, Robert Louis Stevenson's house. Every coach party that comes to Edinburgh stops there. So again, I wouldn't like to live there. Every coach party in Edinburgh 
the route includes that. And they'll stop there for a few minutes while our, well, the tour guys talk about Robert Louis Stevenson. So again, it must be quite annoying to live there. <laughs> it wouldn't be me. I'm just going to cross the road. And yes, so the strange case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. There's different theories about the origins of the inspiration for Jekyll and Hyde. Robert Louis Stevenson used to frequent the old town, despite living in the new town. And his parents didn't want him to visit the old town because that's when all the, the misbehaviour, you know, street drinking, sex work, anti-social behaviour. Whereas the new town, all the poor people stayed there, of course. Whereas the new town was supposed to be more refined and more dignified. So some people think Jekyll and Hyde is the old town and the new town. However, when Robert Louis Stevenson wrote Jekyll and Hyde, he was in the middle of a six day cocaine binge. <laughs> He'd been taking coke for six days when he wrote Jekyll and Hyde. He was also an opium addict. And they reckon the Jekyll and Hyde is him on opium and off opium. As you can see, so this is Queen Street we're in now. Some people think he's, he's based on Deacon Brodie as well. Jekyll and Hyde. Deacon, he never met Deacon Brodie. He was dead before Robert Louis Stevenson, but... He, his legend lives on today, obviously. A beautiful building coming up here. And uh, he was a respectable businessman by day and a womanising gambling thief by night. So this was a... So people reckon it was a, the difference in the character, you know. Like Deacon Brody was a respectable businessman by day. Crook by night. So this, this is the old Royal College of Physicians here. That beautiful building. The Royal Physicians of Edinburgh, the Royal College of Physicians. See the problem is with this prism map now. As soon as I try and go in any buildings, you can't go in the buildings. Because the signal is just they'll just go. So I'll need to start doing more pre-recorded videos, I think. <laughs> Live fast, die young. Aye. Oh, Arthur Conan Doyle was along there as well. So J.M. Barry, uh, Robert Louis Stevenson, Arthur Conan Doyle. Of course, Arthur Conan Doyle was a heroin and cocaine addict as well. But anyway, not in my business. <laughs> Can do what they want, Gadget. You know. So we're on this is as I say, this is Queen Street. This is where they discovered the pain leaving properties of chloroform on this street. James Young Simpson. Just further back along the bit. Used to have chloroform parties. To decide. Oh, just going to cross over here. So this is named after the patron saint of Wales, North St David Street. So you've got St Andrew's Square. It was supposed to be St George's Square after England, and David Street after Wales. And they've got Dublin Street for Ireland, because when these places were built, Ireland was still considered part of Britain. This is the consulate of Romania here. So I'm just going to show you. I think it's this street. Where am I? I'm on the wrong street. Oh, you've got Thistle Street for Scotland as well. So we're almost at St Andrew's Square now. So you can see the Scots Monument up there. So I'm just going to show you the oldest house in the new town. So the new town was built after 1767. A lot of the original buildings are gone. 
actually. A lot of the original buildings are gone, been knocked down. Some of the buildings are okay they've built, but some are not the best. All the smooth sandstone you can see, but I'll just show you the original style of housing that was here. Because remember, when they decanted the uh, old town, it was one of the most filthy, out, out, overcrowded places in Europe. So they wanted to give themselves more space. So this here, you can see. One thistle court. I'll try and duck out the shot. <laughs> so this is the oldest house in the new town. Okay, so that's another one. This one over here is a substation now for electricity. <laughs> All the blacked out windows. But this is the oldest house in the Newtown area. So you can see the complete difference, you know, compared to the smooth sandstone. It's more a rough finish. It's not smooth like the smooth sandstone over here. This is not original building, I, 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 it's basically knocked down, but they've copied the. Uh, that's fake sandstone they've got there. But they, become more, they became more uniformed. So that's the oldest house in the new town. Late 18th century, see the different stellar windows at the top as well. I think they've been added on. You can see different rooms. Just to give them this all the um, little offices now. Again, that's the sister one over there. But that's been turned into an electricity substation for some bizarre reason. You think it would have turned it into the... You can see again different styles of windows at the top. So, as I said, it's been turned into an electricity substation for some reason. So there you go. The oldest house in the new town. But yeah, we're quite um, quiet living here. Again, it's not a very busy street. Obviously, it's got parking spaces on it. Big office block there, but yeah, we're not too bad staying here. But it's just little offices now. So as you can see, it didn't take long to get to Stockbridge from the centre of Edinburgh. It's got a market on a Sunday as well. It's basically just the same market as the Leith Market on a Saturday, but but a slightly bigger. It's a slightly bigger market than the Leith one, Stockbridge. So I might need to go to it one Sunday to see what it's like. I've never been. So this is, is now in St Andrews Square. So you can see it's not that. I mean, I'm a fast walker. But, so that's the Malmaison Hotel there. <laughs> Lots of window taxis, I know. Uh, when these buildings were built, well, when and because the window tax was uh, quite early on. One second, trying to cross the road, I get killed. Yeah, so I gave some flyers to the Malmaison Hotel. And over here, two five-star hotels, the Gleneagles and the, the Grand. So this was the first square built in the new town. This is the oldest part of the new town. And that's George Street, of course, one of the widest streets in Edinburgh. Named after George III, who never ever came to Scotland, of course. He was a monarch when the new town was built, of course. So he wanted his street to be the widest, grandest street in the whole of Edinburgh. Hence, that's why it's like three times as wide as any other house. But I've come up here. So this is the Henry Dundas up here. I suppose I can do the market tour. This is Henry Dundas. 
the self-entitled King of Scotland, or King of North Britain actually. Very controversial character. Um, it's believed, a lot of people believe, that he extended slavery by 15 years. He was the Home Secretary and they were trying to abolish slavery and he put an amendment in saying that um, you could abolish slavery but it would be done gradually and that gradually lasted 15 years. Oh come on, what's the chances? I'm here to see this plaque, right? And there's three people standing there. And they'll be there, it's a tiny little plaque, and they'll be there for a fortnight watch. Aye, right, pal, you've got a horn. <laughs> it's a just eat. The guy's obviously got a horn. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Go on, pal. Go on, go away. And so, yeah, he extended slavery, right, for 15 years. And in that 15 year period, 600,000 slaves, people were condemned to slavery. And somebody stole the plaque. His relatives, they put a plaque up a couple of years ago telling you about the, his role extending slavery, right? And uh, his relatives dis disagree with it, and they, so they stole the plaque. So this just plaque, new plaque, just got put up last week. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> yeah, there was a, a guy, a delivery guy, a cyclist, who must have not seen the green light. And the guy's tooting him to move, but... <laughs> so I'll read out what the plaque says. This was built by the Stevenson family, by the way. This pillar here. They had to invent special cranes to um, put the pillar up. It's 150 metres tall or something. Um, at the top of this neoclassical column stands a statue of Henry the Das. He was a Scottish Lord Advocate and an MP for Edinburgh and the first Lord of the Admiralty. He was a contentious figure, provoking controversies that resonate to this day. Whilst the Home Secretary in 1792 and the First Secretary of State for War in 1796, he was instrumental in deferring the abolition of the Atlantic slave trade. Slave trading by British ships was not abolished until 1807 and as a result of this, this delay, more than half a million enslaved Africans crossed the Atlantic. He also curbed democratic dissent in Scotland and he both defended and expanded the British Empire, imposing colonial rule on indigenous peoples. He was impeached in the United Kingdom for misappropriation of public money and although he was acquitted, he never held public office again. Despite this, the monument before you was funded by voluntary contributions, I'll come back to that in a second, Voluntary contributions from British naval officers, petty officers, seamen and marines and was erected in 1821 with the statue placed on top in 1827. In 2020, there's, there's a siren, but it's the police one this time. In 2020, this plaque was dedicated to the memory of more than half a million Africans whose enslavement was a consequence of Henry Dundas's actions. So, as you can see, he also married a 14-year-old girl, right, for an, her inheritance. She had been left money by her parents dying. She was only 14, so he married her. He was much older, of course. He married her, and then as he got older, she had an affair. They had children by this point, of course. And the laws were in place at that time, even though it was her money, her inheritance, her property, because she had committed adultery. He kicked her out and made her homeless and destitute and she never saw her kids again. So there's nothing on the plaque about that. I look Instagrammers because of the cherry blossom. The Asians like the cherry blossom, don't they? <laughs> Not trying to be stereotypical here, but... <laughs> you can see them when they go to the um, botanical gardens as well. <laughs> oh, here's a monkey puzzle tree, quite a small one, look. How's Sarah doing today? See the monkey puzzle tree? It's a very small one. It's so cold because even a it would puzzle even a monkey to climb it. Hence monkey puzzle. <laughs> oh, so yeah, lovely cherry blossom tree. So this is St Andrew's Square, named after the patron saint of Scotland, of course, St Andrew. Crucified diagonally, of course. Hence the diagonal cross on the Scotland flag. 
and this house here, I'm just going to go over here. Yeah, so this is the Glen Eagles Hotel here. See this one here? This is the Glen Eagles Hotel, it's five star. So the Glen, the Glen, Glen Eagles Hotel in Perthshire, it's a golf course and a hotel, and that regularly is voted in the top hotels in the world in Glen Eagles. So they opened up, they took over this building from the Bank of Scotland. Again, it was built in the early 1800s. It was a Bank of Scotland building. I used to do the maintenance in there. <laughs> so I went in to see them today. Told them I used to work there and sell my tours for me. So they took my flyers and business cards and they're going to hand out my tours. And then next door was the Royal Bank of Scotland building. And that's now been turned into the Grand Hotel. Another five-star hotel. <coughs> <coughs> this is a tram stop, by the way. St Andrew Square. Ah, here's Raffle Coach, he's coming up. Who's the driver? That bus went past Raffle Coaches. They're the company that we use for the two week tours. Some of the drivers are a pain in the butt. <laughs> now, look here. The four fell of Hopton dressed up as a. Islander. That was Raffle Coaches just went past. <laughs> it wasn't Henry, but the fourth Earl of Hopton dressed up as a Roman Emperor. Sleeve owner, of course. It wasn't Henry, I checked. <laughs> I was trying to see if I knew him. Yeah. This was this house here. This bank building here was. Um, Built for the Henry, Dun Henry Dundas, the guy on top of the pillar. This was um, owned by his um, relative Lawrence Dundas. This space here was supposed to be earmarked for a church, right? And um, Lawrence Dundas sneaked in before the church could buy it and bought the land and built this house. And he wasn't very popular, but he was also very corrupt, like uh, Henry Dundas. He was corrupt, so he had a lot of friends amongst the wealthy people, of course. So, he was well liked in certain circles, of course. Warren Stundas, but he was a controversial character. Uh, again, like Henry, Henry Dundas. So, it's now the Royal Bank of Scotland. England only has one bank that can print money, and that's the Bank of England. Scotland has got three banks that can print money. Three banks, three Scottish banks can print notes. And in the banking, I don't know if anyone worked in the banking sector, but in the banking sector, you're not classed as a real bank unless you can print your own money. Yeah? So Scotland has got the Royal Bank of Scotland, the Bank of Scotland, and also Clydesdale. Clydesdale has now been taken over by Virgin. But Virgin, I believe, are now selling it to Nationwide. So, but they are allowed to print money. Okay, they're allowed to print money. Since the age of 15, I've wanted that statue um, down. After I read about what this, um, some of his crimes he committed. He also sent political reformers off to punishments and executed them and so on. Any Scot, it was very British. Scotland was called, called North Britain. Look at the old London bus coming up. Afternoon tea and gin, Harry Potter theme tours, private hire. Yeah, you can have your wedding reception on it. During lockdown, they actually gave us, um, when I was with Invisible Cities, they actually, um, in fact, it's lockdown day today. So today, four years ago, was when Britain went into lockdown for the first time. Do you remember that day? <laughs> four, four years ago? Christ, that's went quick, hasn't it? Four years? In fact, let's go this way and see if there's a band on today. There might be a band playing. Let's go and see if there was a band. It's a Saturday afternoon. <coughs> well, yeah, four years today, we went into lockdown. And I put up a tweet two weeks before today, I remember it. So two weeks before we went into lockdown, I tweeted Nicola Sturgeon, who was the First Minister at the time, and I say to her, Nicola, we need to go into lockdown now. 
do not wait on England. But of course Scotland has not got the power to lock down. So we didn't go into lockdown for another two weeks. And of course in that two week period, thousands of people with COVID were allowed to fly into our country or to travel into our country. And of course, we had a very, one of the worst COVID outcomes in the world this year in Scotland. There we go, the Edinburgh Grand, the Sheevil, Edinburgh Grand. Yeah, Europe was two weeks before us, and I obviously had been, I'd just come back from Spain, and I knew, because we were learning from uh, watching what's happening in Spain and Italy and so on, we knew what was going to happen. And we're like, that lock down, lock down now, don't wait. <laughs> but of course, we've never had the power to lock down. And that was it, COVID went rife, of course. First lockdown was a few, few months, was it? Four months? <coughs> it's quite strange here. We're all allowed out for an hour a day. In fact, I can hear bagpipes, but that just could be coming from a shop. Let's go and see what's uh, happening around here. Hopefully the signal will... Um... Yeah, we should have closed down the borders. We should have closed down all the flights. For three months, stopped everyone from travelling everywhere. Everyone in the world, stay where you are. And uh, we could have possibly contained it. But they just kept allowing everyone to fly. There's a tram coming. That's a, that's a Hibs tram. <laughs> nice green tram there. Oh, here's another siren coming. Still had tourists, that's mad, eh? Yeah, I think a lot of the governments around the world completely messed up COVID, didn't they? Oh, I just got a bagpipe off today. No band, I thought there might have been a band here for Saturday afternoon, you know? <laughs> ding ding! I don't know that tune. It just sounds like a noise to me, you know. Gee whiz, man. I wonder if he's wearing earplugs, eh? Because to me, that just sounds like a racket, man. Yeah, play a tune, me all know. I don't understand bagpipers. Surely you'd be playing tunes that everyone knows. Can we even be live? No, I think most of the bagpipers do play live. Oh, he's just annoying me, that guy, man. <laughs> Sorry, I can only put up with it for so long. <laughs> I wonder if King Charles actually has maintained the tradition of getting woken up by the bagpipe player. Queen Victoria started the tradition. Every day the King or the Queens would get woken up by the bagpipe player. So I think King Charles will have uh, probably maintained that tradition, of course. He, is, he does love Scotland and he acts as though he's in. He acts as though he is Scottish when he comes here. Um, so I wonder if he's maintained that tradition. I haven't heard. Well, it seems to be a demonstration going on up here. I thought I could hear noises. 
Let's go and see if there's a band along here. Sometimes there's bands along here. I can see a demonstration going on. Obviously, there was a terrorist attack last night in Russia. I think over 100 people have been killed so far. Hundreds injured. They attacked a concert venue. Seemingly they'd been warned by America. But um, the Russians refused to act upon it, allegedly. But the problem is, right, I think they've caught or they killed most of the terrorists that attacked them. ISIS have taken the blame. But why would ISIS attack Russia? Russia just hosted a, just, just hosted a meeting with Arabs that day. The people from Hamas and so on. So I don't understand why ISIS would attack uh, Russia. When they're, only, they're the only ones who are trying to help Palestine, you know. It's quite, it seems quite strange to me. So the problem is, is who is Putin going to blame? Because he'll blame the West. So I put up a post last night. Obviously I like to ha hyperbolise. So I put a post up last night on Facebook saying World War III might happen. Um, obviously that was quite a big statement to make, but... Um, something dodgy is going on with it. You know what I mean? As I say, it depends who Putin's going to blame. Because he's going to blame the West. Similarly, the terrorists have admitted they were from Tajik Tajikistan and they had friends and um, they were driving back to Ukraine. To Ukraine, so and Putin has already said that if he's linked it to Ukraine, he's going to execute all of the Ukrainian leaders. So it's a bit scary time, you know. So this is obviously a pa Palestinian. The main ones in Glasgow today, every week since uh, October, there's been demonstrations all over the world on behalf of the Palestinian people. And obviously for Israel as well. The hostages need released. Oh, no thanks, pal. Good luck, buddy. So here we go. There are no bands on today. Yeah, the main demonstrations in Glasgow today. Don't know what. Colonialism and fascism practicing by the state of Some kind of demonstration, a photography demonstration, a link to space. A fragile space, an exhibition by Max Alexander. So much for the exhibition on. Not only individuals, but communities can come together. Ah, we zoomed in. <laughs> Sorry, man, we zoomed in, everyone. A week ago, our friends and me were. Nice so image that. Look at that landfill site in Hawaii. There's a landfill site, look at that. What this does mean in practice? It does mean that we have to go shop by shop and leave home and make sure that no death any single products of Israel or any cultural or activities. activities. There's only a few hundred at a demonstration today. I see there's more, the biggest ones. They take alternative. Oh, there's a stag deal. Look. Look at these idiots. <laughs> I'm assuming he's the groom. <laughs> so you can't get a good view of the Scots Monument here. There's a Scots monument there. Sir, dedicated to Sir Walter Scott, of course. Yeah, it's a beautiful, beautiful day today, isn't it? I said it's quite windy. It's a beautiful sunny day. It's quite good. So there is a little bit of heat, 
which is quite good. That's the two national art galleries there of Scotland, of course. I think the National Gallery was at 1.8, 1.9 million visitors it got last year. All oh, free, of course. Most of the museums and art galleries are free. This is East Princess Street Gardens, of course. When I was a... Uh, well, what I'm trying to this used to be a putting green. Remember pitch and putt? This used to be a pitch and putt um, golf course down here. It's a great place to come. Um, when we were kids, but I, thought, I can't remember when it went away or why it went away because it was very popular. Pardon me, it was very popular. The pitch and putt, you know. This is one of the well, East and West Princess Street Gardens are two of the largest open air green spaces in the centre of Edinburgh. So, as I mentioned earlier, 49% of Edinburgh is green space, and most of that is public. It can be private gardens, golf courses, graveyards and cemeteries is included in that, but Edinburgh is a very, very green city. I don't think it's got as many parks as Glasgow. Glasgow's got a really high number of parks in, Glas in Glasgow. Glasgow is a very green place as well, but it's quite good that you've got this lovely green outdoor space right in the centre of Edinburgh. When I was a teenager, I was a mod. I was a second generation mod. You know, the Vespas and the strun pinstripe suits, stay pressed trousers, loafers, winkle pickers. And this is where we used to come on a Saturday and get chased by the skinheads. <laughs> That's the Bank of Scotland headquarters there. I used to be the maintenance man in there for six years. I done maintenance in there. One of my jobs was to change the flags, see the flag at the top. So that was one of my jobs, fantastic views. I used to take a, a set of binoculars up and go for my lunch and sit up there and spy on all the people in the park. <laughs> and all the people in the park are oblivious to the fact that I'm spying on with binoculars. Great to watch the fireworks, right enough. That's Waverley Station down there, of course, you can see. Yeah, Glasgow's got lots and lots of parks. There's the Scott Boy, let's try to get a different view for you for down here. The second tallest monument to an author anywhere in the world. Around about 1844 it opened up. So again, a lot of the Edinburgh as you've seen today is built in the 1800s. So you can actually pay to go up to the top of that. I've not been up for years actually. I can't remember a lot. I have been up there a couple of times actually to the top. It's quite scary at the top. See, at the top, you can go out right at the very top and you've got a little viewing panel. A couple of people have died. Fallen from it actually. A couple of tourists have died. Um, when a one o'clock gun goes off. You know how the one o'clock gun goes off at the castle every day apart from Sundays, Good Friday and Christmas. Um, yeah, two people have got such a fright. Tourists, when the one o'clock gun went off, they actually fell off the, the monument and died. So, just remember everyone, what happens at 1 o'clock every day, except a Sunday, Good Friday and Christmas, the 1 o'clock gun. And don't ask a local what time does the 1 o'clock gun go off at, because we will just ridicule you. There's some filming going on here, students I would imagine, by the looks of it. Setting up their shot. They can hear the train going out. So I see if this bagpipe was playing any decent tunes yet. <laughs> Give us a Highland Cathedral or a Sky Boat song. Nah, he's still just playing Lance. So no band on. It's going to be too cold for the bands. I thought the bands would have been here, but nothing. <laughs> oh, hey Lisa. Thanks for being a sponsor, by the way. Thanks for everyone who sponsored me and donated a tip. Much appreciated. Hi, Carla. A mod like the jam, yes. Yes, that's who. That's why I became a mod was because of the jam and the movie Quadrophenia came out. So we were we were called second generation mods. So obviously the mods were a 1960s movement. It stands for modern. That's what MOD stands for, modern. 
and yeah, the jam and secret affair. They were kind of like the second generation mod bands. Um, obviously, it was inspired. Oasis would have been inspired by them. The Beatles, of course. 60s music. So that's why I'm coming. Yeah, so I had a Vespa scooter. They had like Italian type clothes, you know. Um, suits. The suit jacket had to have three buttons. You would wear extremely narrow ties, one inch wide ties. I'm the snappiest dresser right down to my inch wide tie. Was the line from one of the songs at the time. So we were a, our favourite bands like Small Faces, The Kinks, The Who. Some like Hermit Hermans, some of the pop stuff. Hermans, Hermits, The Beatles. Um, obviously The Who. But um, The Who was the soundtrack for Quadrophenia as well. So we were go for lunch at one McDonald's. <laughs> In fact, Bonnie from Brighton, I don't know if she's still going to do it, but Bonnie from Brighton was going to do a Quadrophenia themed tour in Brighton. Obviously in the movie Quadrophenia, all the mods go to Brighton for the weekend and they meet up with the rockers and big fights break out with the bikers. Um, so yeah, we had a few fights. We, the mods used to get attacked by everyone. So we would get attacked by the punks, the skinheads and the rockers. <laughs> Everyone was against the mods. <laughs> we used to get chased everywhere. In fact, I just remembered actually, this used to be the YMCA club here. Um, so the YMCA used to have a disco and all the mods took over it. And it was in there, I just remembered that actually. You got a flashback sometimes. Yeah, because we used to meet up here on a Saturday afternoon. Um, Try not get assaulted. <laughs> By the way, Herman's Helmets. Last night I met a new girl in the neighborhood. Oh, yeah. Something tells me I'm into something good. She's the kind of girl who's not too shy. And I can tell I'm her kind of guy. She danced next to me like I hope she would. Oh yeah. There's Mikey there. I've got to go everyone, I'm going to meet Mikey. Ah, uh, a little bit of ska. Yeah, there's a little, a little bit of ska as well. So I'm going to head off everyone. Thank you very much for covering my tour. I can see Mikey sitting there having a beer. No milk today. Hey Mikey, are you on it? <laughs> <laughs> Mikey's on it. So I'm just going to head off everyone. So have a great day. What's left of it. And hopefully I'll, I'll put on some tours for next week. <laughs> have a great weekend everyone. Have the best time. And don't get too drunk. <laughs> Catch you later everyone. I'll put on some tours for next week, yeah. Take care.